Hey guys, today we're going to go through our 18.4 tips. Uh, we're going to start off with some tips for people who would probably struggle with handstand press-ups as the main movement of that workout. So first of all, if you don't have handstand walks but you do have handstand press-ups, do the workout RX because you've got to get to those handstand walks first for it even, them to even matter and there's a lot of work to get through before then for most of us. So I'm going to start off um, with how I would approach this workout. Handstand press-ups are a major weakness of mine. Um, started off with deadlifts, 21 deadlifts. There's probably a high chance that I might do these as singles or just really uh, fast small sets anyway because I want to keep, um, I want to conserve as much energy as possible for when I do get to those handstand press-ups. When I do get to the handstand press-ups, I might have a max set of say 10 to 12 reps. I'm going to break that way under that threshold probably going to be looking at sets of no more than three or four reps. That means that I'm not going to be ever at that point where I'm at the point of failure. Um, the other thing you have to keep in mind is the open standard is a very tough standard to make sure that you're actually reaching that um, full range of motion and that your heels are passing that line. So everything that I'm going to be doing is going to be about making sure my handstand press-ups don't blow out. So small sets on the deadlift and small sets on the handstand press-ups from start to finish. Um, yeah, so this is definitely, in my opinion, a handstand press-up workout for majority of the population. Um, if you are lucky enough to get to, uh, skilled enough to get to the um, handstand walks, you've also got to get through 21 deadlifts at 140 kgs for guys and 95 kgs for girls. Um, at that point, it's going to be about uh, just pure grip and pure fight uh, about how far you're going to be able to go in this workout. Uh, so what do you think for guys that are a little bit more, or guys and girls that are a little bit more proficient at handstand press-ups than I am, um, that have those bigger sets of 20 plus handstand press-ups unbroken, what are you thinking? Um, so for me personally, um, I'm thinking uh, break the deadlifts up, like Zach said, into smaller sets. Um, still, even with the, with the that kind of proficiency in your handstand push-ups, um, manage your heart rate so that when you do get onto the wall, you can bang out big sets. I know Aiden and I are both planning on going pretty close to unbroken on those um, through the 21, the 15 and the 9, which means our heart rate is going to shoot up a little bit um, and that is going to be um, managed by um, making the deadlift sets a little bit more manageable throughout that workout. Yeah, uh, so for myself, getting into that 143 is going to start getting pretty heavy. Uh, so I'm going to try and use my stretch shortening cycle as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to really aim to get some momentum off the floor for every rep. So that doesn't mean I'm going to do big sets, but it means I'm not going to do singles, especially that kind of weight. And I probably will avoid singles at 100 as well, because I want to try to use as much of that momentum in my hamstrings as I can uh, to try get as many reps through there, while to try and get through that as fast as possible without blowing myself out completely. All right? If I drop and reset every rep, means I have to engage everything every single time and uh, I think I'm going to waste a lot of energy doing that whereas if I attack them, attack them with some bigger some smaller sets where I am uh, I'm touching going and I'm getting a bit of momentum from the rep before it's probably going to help me to get a little bit more energy on the wall so I can go unbroken and I can keep pace with people who are a bit stronger than I am. All right let's talk about this new standard for the handstand press-ups um, I think they've got a mathematician in uh, to figure out exactly what is the fairest um, yeah. distance to be able to measure out to get rid of any of that ambig ambiguity, ah, ambiguity about uh, how people are stretching uh, for the rope or keep dropping their shoulders. There was a lot of dodginess going on in previous years from what I'd seen. Um, in the past, one thing I've noticed with the handstand press up um, standard, where you've got no... I'm shorter. <laughs> where you've got no like uh, width that you can move your hands. So people can put their hands out really wide um, and maybe at the start manage to still hit that line. But as you fatigue, if your hands are too wide and you've lost your midline stability, you're going to start collapsing a little bit, which means that you're going to struggle to make that standard for the line if you've been measured out properly. So one thing you have to keep in mind is you may have to bring your hands in to a stronger pressing position just outside of your shoulders um, as you get further into that workout. So, which means a longer range of motion, but a stronger pressing position. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Um, the, the new standard is going to make it a lot more strict. If you've got a good judge, and like Jack said, you have been measured properly, um, it will be a, a tougher standard this year. 
Um, so make sure A, you measure properly, B, you practice the standard um, before you do the workout. So not like tonight if you're doing it tomorrow, um, or now if you're doing it this afternoon. Um, make sure you know what your body has to do to be able to reach that standard every time. Um, and yeah, like Jack said, you might just have to adjust a few bits and pieces to um, be able to make that mark every time. So a few things to remember about making that mark. Uh, feet together. So when you're getting to the top of the hand set, for example, if your feet are wide, that's going to be a more stretched out position and you're not going to be as vertical or as long as you should be. So remember, feet together, that's going to be a really important thing to remember. Dropping the toes, that's going to push your heels up high. So often when you finish a handstand press up, your toes are pointing to the top of the ceiling. By dropping your toes down, that's going to have your um, heels up a little bit higher, which is going to improve the chance of that heel going over nice and clear. What other little things? Yep. Nice tight midline at the top so you're not collapsing into that arched pressed position. You want to be keeping that rib cage down. What we're talking about there is, if any of you watched the open announcement last year when Brooke Wells did it and her midline was collapsing, her bum was against the wall the whole time, it means you can't get the extension through the bottom half of your body or the top half when she's upside down. Um, makes that standard very, very difficult. You've got a ton of no reps because of it. Yep. Um, and also, um, like I said, the hand position. Yep. If, as with every open workout, um, every no rep is incredibly costly. But these handstand press-up reps are so valuable and they take a shitload of energy that one, two no reps is gonna cost you hundreds and hundreds of places on the leaderboard. So be sure that you're making every single rep count. I think when, um, if you watch the open announcement, uh, Pancek, when he was at the um, top of every rep, was there for about an extra half second, waiting for that clear from the judge. He wasn't just cycling through them really fast, uh, risking no reps. He was sure of every single rep that he did. So that's um, just something good to model off uh, from uh, someone who's incredibly experienced. Cool. Good luck, guys, and um, give us a message if you've got any particular um, specific questions about uh, today's workout, this week's workout.